Hi guys, um, it's Simon here and I'm going to talk about the fixed finger closed position system. It's been developed quite a lot by a guy called Ted on jazzmando.com. Uh, he's done, got a lot of PDFs, so check those out. I'll leave the links below. And what it is, is a system for being able to play in any, uh, any key, major key, and minor key, natural minor key. Uh, so you can play any song you, you, you hear. You know, if you hear it on the radio or something, you can immediately play it. It doesn't matter what the key is. So it's, it's a system to do that. And um, this is an intermediate video. So I'm going to, uh, if you're a beginner, I'd suggest just uh, learn the first two patterns and get those really off by heart. Um, because a lot of this is, um, it isn't actually kind of intellectual or, or in your head type thinking. It's actually getting your fingers to think. So it's muscle memory in your fingers. So that's why you, um, for a beginner, you, you want to really do the first two patterns really, really well. Uh, just loads of repetition. So let's begin with this. Um, now, imagine now you're at the top of a cliff and you're looking down on a forest. And this whole fretboard is a forest. It does, it looks a bit chaotic, but imagine these are all the trees in the forest. And just as you're imagining that and thinking, how do you, how do you start? How do you start playing this song? Um, your door of your room opens and a friend walks in and says, oh, you've got the mandolin. Um, I love playing, uh, love singing songs. And they start singing straight away, you know? And so before you've got, even got a chance to think, of what do you do here, in, you're in your forest, they're singing the song. And um, of course it's a song that you know quite well, it's this. Right? You know that song. So you know how to play that. And that is in G, by the way. That, so that big is in G, that's the G there. And you've learned the G scale. So you know it in G. Now, um, the, the, the problem is that when they start singing, this friend of yours, loads of energy, um, they'll be singing in like C and a quarter, which is like, it's somewhere between C and C uh, sharp. You know, they'll be somewhere there. And it's because they didn't have an instrument to start with. But anyway, what you have to do is to bring this, this tune that you know, up to the C. And to, to do, so you would play it like this. Now, but for me to play that, I had to put my finger down like the uh, the nut, right? So I bring the finger up there, and then I would play the same thing. So this is in G, and if I bring the same pattern up to here, I'm playing it in C. And this is what we call the first finger pattern. And here we go, I'm gonna do it slowly this time. Right? Now, what do you notice about that to start with? Um, first of all, um, well, first of all, when you start the, uh, the the song, all the notes go in this direction, all of them. Um, it means that if you have any notes in the song that are below this note, um, you won't be able to do it without sliding. But whereas the other fingers, you can get them. So the third finger, it'll come down to there, second as well. Um, so this is the first finger, it's going up. So uh, the, the slight disadvantages, but here we go. Um, what else do you notice? Another thing is this, look. That is the boundary line. Here, as we said, it's like a forest. Um, this is like a freeway that cuts all the way through the forest, all the way up to the seventh, and then it stops dead. And then it just trees after that. And the number for that is, that's a fourth here. Then one, five, two, six, three, seven. So it's four, one, five, two, six, three, seven. And here, one, two, that's the second note. Two, six, three, seven. All right, that's, that's the same number. And here's the, the three again, seven. Three, seven, two, six, three, seven. Um, and here is a four. Four, one, five, two, six, three, seven. Do you see how, and before the four, it, it stops as well. There's, there's just, um, no, what, it, what it is, is there are notes there, but they're not in the scale that we're playing. And at the moment, it's the scale of C, um, because we're here, um, and that's another C, but it could be anyway. It could be, you could start off in B, F sharp, whatever. If you, um, if you start the song in F sharp, for example, um, if the song is in F sharp, then you'd be playing up here. 
right? Now, you don't want to be playing up here. Well, you, if you've got very small fingers, you, you, you love it here. But I'd, <laughs> I've got bigger fingers, so I, I prefer it down here. So I just take the F sharp and bring it down here. Right? And, uh, and that's another thing as well, is that right here, certainly in the second finger position that I'll be playing, some people may find that a really big stretch. I mean, I, f I find it a big stretch myself, and my hands are reasonably large. So if that's the case, then you just bring this C, see that's another C? You just bring this C up to here, and you can play the same pattern. This is C. See, it's the same pattern. And then you go up, go up like that. So, um, what else do you notice? This is uh, those are the two boundary lines. We've got the two uh, freeways <laughs> bounding on, on either side, and we've got um, four empty frets. Now, another thing is this: this, this is the number one. That's the number one, and this is like a cabin, you know. And so, in a sense, what you're doing is your um, your friend is still singing, by the way, and your friend is starting this song, and you're trying to find this cabin in the forest where you're like like secure, you know. Well, this is another cabin here, and here is like a garden around it. I hope you can imagine this. <laughs> um, so, and the the cabin is always on the bottom right hand side of the uh, of the garden. So you have this square garden here. And the cabin there. Now, ch check this other thing. There's another rule. Notice how this we got five frets and then across the one, right? Five frets and one. This is another rule. If you jump diagonally back two, then you get to another C. So that's another C. Another thing is that's that is another C as well. That's an uh, two octaves above. Notice how this octave here to there is two frets back. This is three frets forward, and then look. It's the same pattern. It's the same pattern because from here you can go back two, and from here as well, you can go back two to there. Right? Another thing to notice is that we begin on the four, uh, first finger to go up, and we're going to come back down on the fourth finger. But the fourth finger coming down is the same pattern as the first finger coming up. Um, that's important to remember because in a minute we'll be doing the fourth finger going up, and that is a completely different pattern. Okay? And then uh, another thing to notice, and this is probably is really important, is that you, you've got the root there and the root there, but notice that the garden with the cabin is on the right-hand side for the first finger pattern. So first finger pattern, garden on the right-hand side. Okay. Now we're going to do the, the next pattern. Okay? The next pattern is starting here on the fourth finger, and it goes like this. See that? So what do you notice about that? Well, it's the same boundary lines you got there, the same freeways running there. Um, and the, the garden is in the middle now. See the, the four um, empty frets there? Um, this garden is in the middle. Right? And again, the uh, cabin is on the right-hand side. Um, now, next thing you're going to notice is that with this finger, the first finger, the number one was up here. And it's kind of obvious where the one is because um, you, you, you don't want to go up here. There, there, there are only two choices, there and there, the, this number one or that number one. And uh, because you're using the first finger, this is really the only choice you've got. If you're on second finger, that the f your f first finger would naturally fall down there. The, the, the third finger, the second finger, naturally fall onto the, the next one up, next octave up. Um, I hope you can see that. But anyway, the fourth is the same thing. So, in fact, when we get up to the, um, the fourth finger here, um, the, the next octave is naturally the th on the, th the third finger. So the third finger and the fourth finger are kind of connected in, in a sense. Fourth finger up, third finger down. But what I'm saying is that when you practice these patterns, try practicing the um, octave each time, like two or three times like that. And then try, try practicing the next one like that. Like that. Um, I, I, I'm going to move on to the second finger and the third finger in a minute. But um, now is about the time that if you're a beginner, you want to stop. Um, because r really, you've got this first finger pattern. You can bring that down to here and see how that works there. And you can see how the fourth finger pattern would work there as well. But you're going to bring it up to here. Now, um, if you play this for about a month, you're going to go, 
you, you won't be able to do it just like that. So here are the patterns. Here are some exercises you can, you can practice. So here's one. Right, that's a pattern. That's, that's just jumping um, a third up, come back down uh, a second, up a third again, all the way up. Um, another pattern would be six. You can go like this. And, and you just kept, keep, keep going up like that. That's six all the way up. Um, another pattern would be, uh, this is a bit more complicated. Right. That was that. That's jumping at um, one, three, five, seven, one. It is basically, and then you take the next note and you do the one, uh, the, uh, three, but it's the th three from the next note. If you can imagine that, so it goes like that. Right, so those patterns, and you can do that backwards. Um, I'm not going to do it backwards for you right now, but you can do that. That's another pattern. Now the second finger, play it like this. Now you'll notice straight away that there are no gardens here at all. There are no gardens. All it is is just symmetrical lines running running straight down the fretboard like that. And the uh, the number one is here, and it, you you actually there is a garden, but it's off the uh, off your uh, the scale here. That's the one there. That's the four, and so it's off there like that. Um, but th that's the pattern. Um, to remember it is it's kind of easy. It's reasonably easy to remember that pattern, but it's very very difficult. I find it very stretching. It's really difficult, but it's good practice to to do that. If your hands, as I said before, if your hands are, are small, try try the same thing but further up. Do, do it in D, for example. Uh, start there. That would be D, or do it in E. Right. Um, um, so that and that's E. And then remember also that this is when you get to the one, um, you carry on symmetrical, and it stops on the the fourth here because that's a um, it's it's right next to it. And uh, notice again another thing to notice. See how this is the third and fourth above it. Obviously, is the seventh and eighth, isn't it? Because the third and fourth is part of uh, the garden and the um, the cabin that you're staying at. All right. So, so that's the second um, second finger. I also find with the second finger, it's it's difficult to play fast without that. And then the third finger is this one. So you put this third finger here. And you play that. Um, if you if you lo notice here, the uh, the the garden is on the uh, left hand side. So uh, third finger is gardens on the left hand side, right? So instead of looking at this as a forest with uh, the cabins like that, there, there, and there, um, which you you try and keep in mind. Instead of looking at them like that, you could look at them as just one cabin, and you play the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight like that, and then on the same one. Do that, and then do like that, and then the fourth. Well, the fourth, it would run here anyway. But um, you can see that you can play from that cabin. You can play each of the fingers, and each. T if you change a finger, you'll find that the double stops are easier. That's pretty much it. Next video, I'm going to talk about the uh, the minor harmonic uh, in fixed finger. And that'll be slightly related to the major scale. You'll be able to see how they um, are linked in some ways. All right, cheers.